Welcome to labmins.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS videos on the website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In the last lab video, we have built our core MPLS and we have gone as far as advertising the PE to CE subnet from each of our sites into our MPLS. What we're going to be looking into next is to run dynamic routing protocol between CE and PE and that way CE can advertise routes dynamically and we're going to start with RIV v2 in this video. Okay, so what we're going to be looking into is the RIV v2 basic configuration. We're going to see how the RIV metrics or hop counts are treated as the route are advertised across MPLS. Our physical network topology in this lab remains the same as the previous labs with eight routers, R1 through R8, and one switch, switch 1, with R2, R3, R4, and R5 connected with the serial point-to-point -point link and the other routers connected across the VLANs. Okay, if you've watched our previous video, you should be pretty familiar with this diagram by now. So moving down to our layer 3 topology in the middle, we still have our MPLS core network that we built from the previous lab. And we also have four sites, site 1 through site 4, split into two separate VRF, C1 and C2. And we're going to be enabling RIP V2 for our PE to CE routing protocol. So we're going to pretty much continue where we left off from our lab, SP0006. So let's begin our configuration of task number one with RIV v2 basic configuration. Here we need to configure RIV v2 on R6, R7, and then advertise that loopback 10 through 12. And then we need to configure R1 and R2 to accept the RIP routes from R6 and R7, since R1 and R2 are the PE routers, and then advertise those routes across to the MPLS VPN. Okay, and then the RIP route metrics should not be altered by the MPLS VPN, and then we have to verify connectivity between R6 and R7 and loop back 10 to 12. So going back to our diagram real quick, so basically what we're dealing with in this particular test is just our VRFC1, so here on the green circle on the left with R6, and then on the right with R7. So we're going to be providing connectivity between the R6, R7 loop back interfaces. Okay, so starting from our left-hand side on R6, here on router R6, we're first going to configure RIP routing protocol with the router RIP command. Just like anything else, we do not auto summary. And then we have to make sure we specify version 2, because by default it's version 1. And then we do passive default. And since we're only using our fast 00 on R6, let's take a quick look. Show IP interface brief right here, fast 00. It's on VLAN 16, we do no passive, fast, zero, zero. Then we do a regular network command, but since we're dealing with a RIP protocol, we're going to be put in a class full subnet. So for our fast, zero, zero, that would be a 172.16.0.0 zero, zero for our class B. And then for our loopback, it's going to be 6.0.0.0. Zero, zero, zero. That pretty much includes all of our loopback 10 through 12 because that's a class A IPs. Okay, so that should be all we need on R6 for it to start advertising routes using RIP. Okay, next, next we're going to be configuring R1 to accept route from R6. So R1 is our PE router. So get under router RIP. Actually, before we do that, let me uh, do a quick ping VRF C1 and make sure I can ping R6 fast 00. So 16.16.6. .6. See that's pingable, so we're good to go. Go back under router rip, no auto, version 2, passive interface default, and then no passive interface. And on R1, we're dealing with fast 01.16 since it's a sub interface. Okay, then to make sure that the rip route's being learned from R6 by R1, it's going to be placed under the VRF C1, so we need to get under the address family. It's going to be IPv4, then VRF C1. So this is where we're going to be completing the rest of our RIP configuration. Okay, network command. Again, it's class full, 172.16.0.0. To have that enable. And then once the RIP routes are learned, it has to be redistributed into MPBGP or our IBGP so that it can be transported across the MPLS. So here, this is where we going to have to complete our BGP configuration. So what we're going to do now is to only allow R6 loopback 10 through 12 to be advertised into our MPLS. So let's come up with a prefix list 
to make sure that's the case, so IP prefix list, let's call it R6. I'll load for our loopback, permit 6600, we can do a slash 22, less than or equal 24 to include all of our three loopback interfaces. Then we can do route map, okay, let's call rip 2 BGP for our C1, then permit 10, match IP address prefix list, and then copy and paste. Okay, then we get under the router BGP 100, and we are dealing with VRFC1, so we have to get under our address family IPv4, VRF, C1, just make sure that the redistributed routes gets placed as part of the BGP address family VRFC1. Then we use our redistribute command when we are redistributing from our RIP. Okay, then we can tie route maps to that, and we call our route map, let's see, right here, RIP2 BGP C1. Okay, enter. And then since we are already on R1, might as well complete the configuration as well. So R1 is going to be receiving an MPBGP route, so our VPN v4 routes from R2. And when that happens, R1 has to redistribute those routes back into the RIP routing process. Okay, so this is the return on the route that's being received from the other site. So we need to get under router RIP. And then again, address family, IPv4, PRFC1. And then we have to do redistribute from BGP AS100. We need a question mark. You have an option to specify the metric if you want to manipulate the metrics or tie a route map to that. And if, when you specify the metric option, you have a, also more options to hard code it to a certain metrics value or you can make it a transparent. And what that means is whatever metrics information that's being carried as part of the BGP routes will be passed on to the RIP route as well, which you will see in a second here. Since our task specified that the metrics of the route should not be altered, we're going to make it a matrix transparent. Right, so at this point, our RIP route, so R1 should have learned the RIP routes from R6. So if we do show IP route, let's see, BRF C1 RIP, you can see that R1 has learned uh, 6 loopback 10 through 12, as well as R6 loopback 0. And that got advertised as part of the network command since we specified the class 4 and the R6 loopback 0 IPs falls within that range as well. So but we're not going to really care about that route here. So next we check if the RIP route has been properly redistributed into BGP. So we'll just show IP BGP, BP and V4. Let's see, VRF C1. Okay, so you can see that the route has been properly redistributed. And then those are just for the three loopback routes, and we don't see the R6 loopback zero because it's not part of our IP prefix list and route map. Okay, so that gets properly placed into the BGP routing table. So, so far we have just completed on the left-hand side. Now we're going to move over to our right-hand side, starting with our router 7. So get under router 7 and do the same thing. Let's do show IP in the face brief. And here we're dealing with again fast 0, 0. And then loop back 10 through 12. So router rip. No auto summary. We'll do rip version 2. Passive default. No passive fast 0, 0. Network. Start with the loop back 7 slash 8. And then the fast 0, 0. 182, 16 slash 16. Okay, so that for, that's for the CE router R7. Now we're going back to R2. And let's make sure that R2 has a VRFC1 right here. Do a quick ping just to make sure. 21.16.27.7, I believe. Okay, you can ping R7. So we have connectivity. Then we get under the router rip. No auto summary, version 2, passive default. No passive interface, fast 0, 0. And then Make sure the RIP routes is going to be enter into the VRFC1. So a PV4 VRF C1. Enable the network command. Once they do 16 slash 16. And while we are under the router RIPs, let's do a redistribute from BGP 
So those are going to be routes that the site's going to be learning from the remote sites. So it will be redistribute from a BGP 100. And just like what we did on our site one, we're going to do matrix transparent. Okay, so here if we do show IP VRFC1 rip, hopefully, uh, show IP route rather, VRFC1, and we can see the R2 is where we receive the routes from R7. Okay, now we're going to redistribute these routes from rips into BGP. So again, we can have with a uh, prefix list to filter just for the R7 loop back 10 through 12, permit 7700 slash 22, let's then equal 24. Route map, let's call rip 2 BGP and let's cross C1, permit 10, match IP address prefix list, R7, and let's call LO. Okay, and then under the router BGP, 100, we'll get under the address family IPv4, VRFC1 to perform our redistribution. Then we do redistribute, rip, route map, copy and paste, rip2, BGP, and it's C1. Okay, so let's do show IP prefix list detail. We got hit counts of six. See that's happening right now. We can just show IP BGP, VP, and V4, VRFC1, just to check how that looks. And here, these are the local routes from R7, redistributed from ripped to BGP. You can see the weight value. And then in addition to that, we also are seeing routes that's being learned from the remote sites across the IBGP. And those are the R6 loopback 10 through 12. Okay, one thing to make note of right here is the metric value. And those are copied over from the hop counts from the rip routes. Okay, so locally uh, too, so let's give you the show IP route VRF C1 rip. You can see how oh, these route has a hop count or metrics of one. So that gets copied over into the BGP route as well as using the metrics attribute. At the same time, the same thing is happening from the remote site and the router R2 are seeing the metrics being the same. So basically the MPLS network does not add the metric or cost into the route and the metrics of the route come across being the exact same metric okay so the mpls itself is almost uh, transparent to the ce devices as far as it doesn't add value to the metric okay we can also look at show ip bgp vpn v4 vrf c1 specifically looking at our six loop back 10 so six six zero zero as you can see, just like the previous video, we have our RD or route distinguisher 100 colon 100 prepended to the prefix to make it a unique VPN v4 routes. Then we have our metric of one, same default local preference of 100. Then we have our route target for our extended community 100 colon 100, and then also a MPLS label that's being received as part of the MPBG. Okay, so if we go over to router R1, and I'm just do up arrow, you can see the R1 has also received the R7 loopback zero route with the metrics of one. Okay, now let's go to R7, which is our CE router, and do show IP route rip. And you can see that the R7 is seeing R6 loopback 10 through 12 with the metrics of two. So as far as the R7 is concerned, R7 only has two or thinks that R6 is only two hops away across the MPLS because the metrics is two. And if we go to R6, we should be seeing something very similar. So show IP route rip. See R6 is seeing R7 loopbacks with the metrics of two as well. And if we go ahead and do a ping 7701 sourcing from loopback 10, you can see those are pringable. And we're going to do trace routes, sourcing from loopback 10. You can see it's definitely more than two hops. As far as the metric is concerned, it's only two. So it went through one, three, four, two, and seven. So there will be one, three is our P router. That's right in this middle of our MPLS core. So six, one, three, four, two, seven. Okay, we can also try the loopback 11. You can see that trace just fine as well. And we should be able to ping it too. Okay, and then loop back uh, 12.
Okay, so just like I said, as far as the R6 and R7s are concerned, the two routers thinks that it's only two hops away from each other. So to it, it looks like the, here's a first hop and then here's a second hop. And then the whole MPLS network doesn't get added to the whole hop counts or metric. Okay, and that should complete our task number one.